Hi. So for today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make gloves in Marvelous Designer. Now, a few months ago, I went down a real deep hole of gloves and how they work, how to make them. And I knew it was going to be complicated, but I was not prepared for quite how complicated they would they would be. And um, so I'm going to try and teach you what I've learned, hopefully in a somewhat coherent way. All right, let's get started. Now, the first thing we should do is look at some glove patterns. Now, if you've ever tried to make gloves in Marvelous Designer, the first thing you'll, you'll know is that there are not a lot of glove patterns available just on the internet. There's even on Pinterest, there's like five or six that, that you can use. But we'll, I'm going to go over some of the main features that, that we're going to be looking at here. Um, the first is the shape. If you'll notice the shape on pretty much all glove patterns, the fingers are straight. They're not spread out, they're straight. So that's going to be important. The next thing to notice is that even though they look symmetrical front to back, they're not. The fingers on the this side, the cuts down here are shorter than the ones on the front. So these cuts on the front are going to be longer. You can see that this is the top of the glove right here because the cuts are longer and that obviously has to do with the webbing in your finger and it's at an angle. So that's going to be important. Um, the other thing that's uh, that's important are these things here. They're called fourchettes. Now if you just make a, a front and back piece like uh, here and here and then sew them together, you they're flat, but when you sew them in between here, you're going to get all kinds of scrimping and scrunching, and that's no good. That's why we need these things, which are apparently called fourchettes, and they go in between your fingers like that. If you think of your fingers as like, you know, when you're drawing, you block them out and they're rectangles, and you need to get something on the side. So we're going to be working with fourchettes, and the other thing we're going to be... Um, uh, doing is this kind of a thumb. Now you're going to see this kind of, there's a couple kinds of thumbs, well two kinds of thumbs really. There's this one where it's just a regular hole, but in a lot of patterns you're going to see this kind of thing with this diagonal flange here and this cut up here. And this that's really confusing. That took me a long time to work out, but I'm going to be doing this kind of thumb because it's going to give you more, it's going to give you better movement in the thumb for when you're animating and you want your glove to look better. It's just going to give you some better movement in there and I'm going to show you how to put that thumb on. So those are the big things um, that we're going to be doing today. And and this is kind of a really basic glove um, and that you can base all of the gloves off of because if you look at gloves, like just pictures of gloves, there are so many varieties and um, so this is just going to be a good starting point for any glove that you want to make. Okay, let's get started. Now, um, unlike most things, I'm going to be doing, uh, unlike most pieces of fabric, I'm going to be doing this a little bit backwards. I'm going to be starting with the fingers as opposed to like starting with the big part of the glove. Like in a shirt, you'd start with the torso and then work with the sleeves. Essentially here, we're going to be making the sleeves first. And the reason I do it this way is because fitting gloves is hard. Like actually putting gloves on a character, if you make the gloves off of the character, um, it's so hard to put them on. So we're just gonna build them right on and the hardest part to fit are the fingers. So we're going to fit the fingers on first. And to do that, I'm just going to draw out this rectangle like this that is about the side length of a little longer than a finger. And uh, we, I'm going to tack it to the avatar. So we're going to use this little button up here that's tack on avatar. I'm going to go up here right to about the center point up there. And we're going to start working on the middle finger. And I'm going to put this piece on there. I'm going to simulate and it's going to fly and tack on. All right. Now this is obviously too long. So let's shorten it up. Okay, so that's, that's about right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste this piece. And I'm just going to adjust it so that it's right about under the middle finger. And I'm going to uh, look at my single sided surface. And you'll notice that my normals are in the wrong direction here. So let's just go ahead and right click on that and flip the normal. All right, now we're just going to sew this together. So we're going to sew both sides together. Simulate. Okay, 
Now you're going to be running in, you're going to be noticing probably the biggest problem I've seen people have with gloves. And that is not having the particle distance uh, low enough or the, the detail high enough. Um, because gloves are significantly smaller than like a shirt, your particle distance needs to actually be lower. So I'm working at 10 right now, but when I work at gloves, I like to work at five. And for this reason, if you, unless you have a really awesome computer, I would recommend making gloves um, by, their, by themselves. Have no other uh, fabric going on in, in your project. Have the, make the gloves by themselves because you are going to need to work at a low particle distance. So if you have other stuff in your scene, it's going to slow things down quite a bit. And so for that reason, Try and work on gloves with gloves on their own and then you know import them back into the project when you're done with them or export them or whatever you're gonna do with them. So if you're having problems with gloves, the first thing I would recommend is turning your particle distance down because that's gonna fix a lot of things like collisions and it's it's like let me turn this up to 15 and you can see that things are just they're not gonna bend right, they're not gonna nothing's going to look right. So make sure your particle distance is low enough. Uh, the other thing to look out for is when you're working on your model, by default, when you bring in a model, the um, if you double click on it and go over here in the property editor of your model, the skin offset, it defaults to three millimeters. And let me turn three millimeters on. Um, and you can see that three millimeters, it it offsets a lot, so I usually like to turn that down to zero. You might want to turn it down, turn it down to like zero point five or one if there's too much uh, clipping coming through the fabric. But for me, I just turned it down to zero. Now that looks okay, but we're still getting a little bit of gap in there, which is not what I want. And that's over here with your collision thickness. Um, that's the uh, just the thickness of your fabric within the scene, which is. 2.5, I'm going to set that down to 1, which is about the thickness of leather. And then also my rendering thickness, I'm going to turn that up to 1 so that it will look like leather. And obviously when it's on a single-sided surface, it's not going to show the thickness, so I'm going to turn that back up to a double-sided surface. Now you've got this essentially leather, actually I need to, yeah, that's fine. We'll just keep this on the default fabric for now. And I want to actually do that over here too. One and one. Okay. So now that looks about right. Okay. So we've got this uh, tube of fabric. It fits, you want it to fit mostly nicely around the, uh, the thickest part of the finger right in here. And it does. So now we can go to the next part, which is creating our four sheds. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take all four of these edges and I'm going to right click and offset as internal line and I'm going to offset by 10 maybe more let's try 11 okay all right so now I've got these piece these internal lines offset by 11 so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just grab all of them and I'm going to cut and sew and let's organize everything a little bit more. So, now these side pieces are cut. What I need to do now is actually merge them together. So I'm going to right click on that, sewing, and merge it, and do the same thing on the other side and merge that. Now what I want to do is I want to grab both of these and I'm going to apply uh, symmetric editing. So I want to apply linked editing symmetric pattern. I don't want with sewing. I just want a regular symmetric pattern. Okay. Now we can delete these points because those points aren't doing anything. And I can delete that point since that's not doing anything. Now, when you look at these four sheds, um, let me go back to this and see if I can find them. Right. You'll notice that they're angled up like this, and that's obviously because one side needs to be shorter, as well as they're kind of in this shape, which is it's straight on top and then angled up, because these four sheds help give the shape of the finger of the glove. So to do that, 
what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take this point and I'm going to delete it so that it's now a triangle like this. And then I'm going to add in some curve points and just create that finger shape of the forchette like that. So it's going to just taper up to the end of the, to the nail like this. Okay. So that's what that does now. Oh, I need to extend this sewing out oops, to the end of the shed. So let's just extend everything out. Okay. Now, obviously this bottom part needs to be shorter. Well, hang on. Basically, because you've got this webbing in here, you need it, you need the uh, forchettes to be at an angle and that's going to cause this bottom piece to be shorter than your top piece. So let's go ahead and just add in an angle on our forchette first of all. So about, I don't know, that much, I guess. Okay. I wonder if I need to pull my tack up. No, no, I won't. Okay. Now I've done that, but you see what that's done is, um, the sewing is uneven, so I need to actually shorten this bottom piece because this is 104 right here and 114 over here. So I'm going to take the bottom piece and just shorten it up until it matches up on the bottom. All right. So let's look at that. Now I'm actually going to move this tack up so that my finger is more butted up against the webbing so you can see if it fits okay. I think I actually want to make this bottom piece a little shorter even. So let's go ahead and shorten that up just a bit. And then we'll have to bring the uh, forchette down to match up the sewing lengths. Okay. That's okay. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just taper out, um, or I'm going to add a little curve to the end of the finger here. And I'm not going to worry about making these perfectly symmetrical. I'm just going to eyeball it to bring out a bit of a curve in the, uh, in the finger. And then the other thing I'm going to do is actually I'm going to taper the finger in just slightly. So I'm going to grab this line, double click the uh, pivot, pull it in so that this finger tapers in just a bit. Do the same thing over here. And again, I'm not going to worry about it being perfectly symmetrical going to make it really really close okay now we can sew the uh the fingers together right here so go ahead and do that now this is too long and we can we need to kind of fit the finger so if you go over to your surface types i'm going to go over to this like translucent surface type and that's a pretty good way of fitting your uh, finger length so i'm just going to Scale it back in a bit more. Oh, oh, you know what? For some reason, if you have these symmetrically linked, it like doubles up this scaling, which is really weird. So I'm going to remove the linked editing on these four sheds because I think I'm done with linked editing on them. I don't need that anymore. So watch out for that. That might actually be too, because I'm going to have to pull that finger back up anyway. All right. So now you've got that finger fitted pretty well. Might be a little bit baggy, but we'll fix that later. The other thing you want to do is, of course, always uh, check your sewing lengths to make sure that everything matched up, that nothing went weird. So I'm. I'm inside of a millimeter on all my sewing lengths here, so that's good. All right, now we've got to make the uh, pointer finger. Now the pointer finger is a little bit different than the uh, than the other fingers because I'm just going to copy and paste it and kind of match it up and sew it on. Okay. And then I'm actually going to sew these two forchettes together just to that'll hold it into place so the finger doesn't fall off the hand. Um, okay, now the reason this is a little different is because um, 
on gloves, on most leather gloves, most of them you'll see, is the seam comes up through here. There's no foreshad on the side. So this is one seam right here. So we need to create a seam on this one side. All right, so the way I'm gonna do that is, um, well, there's not really any good way to do this. So I'm just gonna show you a way to do it. I'm going to just create a line, which is going to be my seam. I'm going to cut and sew it. Take those two pieces. And then I'm going to merge this piece onto here. So I'm gonna merge that piece onto this side, and then I'm going to merge this piece onto this side. And obviously, since this is curved and this is straight, it's not gonna merge particularly well, but it will be good enough. And then we're just going to have to kind of adjust it ourselves. Um, so I'm actually going to delete all of this sewing here. And I'm going to kind of curve everything together. So I'm gonna create some curve points here. To delete all these curve points, put that to a curve point, pull this down. Oops, okay. Get rid of that. And you see this, so on this side curve here, this should come in at a much shallower angle. These two should meet at a shallower angle like this, and then and then the frechette will again meet over here. And this is something you could go into quite a bit more, uh, I don't know, not detail, but you could really work on this finger here a lot more. Look at some gloves and see how they the curve on the on the side seam goes. And um, but this is just a basic way to do it. Merging it will get you the general shape. Um, and then I'm just going to sew those two fingers like that and you see you get a little bit of a thing right there so you can try and bring that in as best you can and generally just fit it as as best you can I've not found a particularly good way to uh, to do that you're probably just gonna have to eyeball it a bit. All right, now check your sewing again, make sure things are right. And then we can delete these points so we just have one, one solid straight line instead of those bent angles. Okay, now that we have those two fingers done, uh-oh, uh-oh. Okay, so this is actually a particle distance of 10. Oh, I want, yeah, I want five. All right. There we go. That's better. Let's see, particle distance, it helps. All right. Okay, this finger actually is going to need to be longer. Although, now that we have those two fingers done, we're, we're uh, mostly done with the fingers because the other two fingers are just uh, variations of these two fingers, so we can just copy and paste them. So for the ring finger, we'll copy and paste this, and again, stick it on over here. Ooh, don't fall off, we'll uh, sew the four shets on so that it will stay up. Oh, I forgot to grab all four pieces. All right, grab all four pieces. And then put that finger on like that. Okay, so that on. Now, obviously, we're going to need to resize this. So let's scale it up. Okay, and also we're going to need to make this narrower around. So, of course, we can do this and just kind of make it more narrow to fit the ring finger better. But watch out because that's going to um, change the scale of your four sheds here. So all you need to do is come over and um, adjust it, the ends of these four sheds so that they match up uh, pretty close. So 0.3. So just watch out for that. Now, the other thing we're going to have to do here is um, this 
part, this um, side needs to go back significantly because this webbing is much higher than the, the pinky webbing. So we're going to grab this, uh, this fourchette here, and then we need to grab the point that matches on here, which is this point, and on the back side, which is this point over here. So you want to check and make sure you're grabbing the right side. So you grab that, grab that, and grab that, and then just pull everything up. So hold shift and pull everything up until it goes back into the pinky like that. All right. Now for the pinky, that's going to be similar to the uh, the first finger because there is no foreshadow on the side. So we're just going to use this first finger and we're going to copy and paste it over to here. Now obviously since I copy and pasted it, um, it's going to be reversed and we need to get this seam on the other side. And that is not too terribly difficult. I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's just get this on. Uh, and I'm going to put just a little pin right there to hold it up while I do this. So to flip this over, all I have to do is I have to go in here. Um, oops, come on. There we go. Right click on this and I'm going to flip it horizontally. So that's going to flip it that way. And I'm going to do the same thing to the back piece. Right click on it, flip horizontally. Okay. And then if we kind of pull these out, you can see that I now need to move the fourchette over to this side. And now all the sewing makes sense, but we're not quite finished because if we look at the uh, single side surface, you'll see the normals on this are flipped. So just go ahead and right click on that and flip the normal to get that in the right, get that in the right orientation. All right, and now we can sew it back up and Everything is flipped and the seam is on the right side. Now we just need to, of course, scale this down quite a bit to make it fit. I think I will actually put the push that over on that side. Okay. And I'll sew that onto there. This might need to be a little bit longer, maybe a little bit wider. Again, using my translucent to and then check your lengths on the uh, four sheds since they're going to be a little bit off. All right, and now we are pretty much uh, done with the fingers. Yeah, you see, you get that little bulge there that, mm, let's try angling that in, see if we can get rid of that a little better. Oh, that's a little bit better. Same thing over here. All right. Okay. So we're pretty much mostly done with the fingers. Um, what I'm going to do now is actually uh, this is not 100% necessary this step, but I do it because um, it makes it fit better. But it's it's if you don't want to, you don't have to do this. This is a step that I just like to do to make the gloves fit a little bit better. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a um, all my four sets here. And yeah, that one too. And I'm going to offset the pattern outline by about 2.5. Yeah, 2.5. So offset this by 2.5. And what this is going to do is this going to give like a little bit of a of a gusset right in between the fingers. Um, on the top side. I don't need it on the bottom side so much, but I do need it on the top side and that'll give a little extra fabric up here too, which is where you need it because when 
when you form hands like this, the fabric stretches on top. So I like to have a little bit more on top and a little less on bottom. So that's essentially what I'm doing here. And then I'm going to delete this point. I'm going to delete that point because I don't want It's, it's a little bit hard to describe exactly what I'm doing, but I, I think you'll see what I'm doing uh, pretty soon. Okay, so I need to readjust the sewing and make the sewing back down on all these. And again, you don't have to do this step. This is just something I like to do because it makes things uh, fit better. Okay. So now you see up in here, you've got this little extra bit of fabric that's in, in the webbing that's gonna help things. Okay. Now what we can do is start on the, uh, the palm stuff. So to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to grab all these fingers like this, the tops, and we're going to organize them and uh, yeah, this one. All right. And then I'm going to Match everything up. All right, and I'm just going to drag out a big rectangle here and I'm going to put these two points right on the ends here and then I'm going to add in, just use my split line tool to add a point. Oh, match it, come on. Have it snap right to there. The same thing right here and same thing right here and then I'm just going to make these straight up and down all right and then take this and I'm actually going to add some internal lines here some vertical internal lines and I'm going to cut all these cut those and then I'm going to take these all of these edges here on the inside and I'm going to offset them I'm going to offset pattern outline by 2.5 the same amount as I did for the uh, these little gussets in between the fingers so that's why you have to do that oh what did I do what am I doing okay and now what I can do is I can take all these and merge them. So that's going to give me the proper length up top. So I can merge all these. And then for the bottom, we're going to do something similar. Now, what's important about doing this part on the bottom is to make these a mirror image is to make sure you've got these organized correctly you want them to be uh mirrored to these fingers to be mirrored here because if you organize them like this and then try and sew it's going to sew backwards so just make sure that your fingers when you're organizing them are mirrored across this way okay and then again i'm going to match everything up And I'm going to drag out a rectangle and, oops, and just put those on like that. Add in your little points. And I don't need to cut this because this is already the right size. I actually had to offset the pattern outline to make that piece the right size. Okay, so now that they're all done like that, we can sew everything on. So. Just sew your pieces together. Same thing on this side. Sew it all together. Okay, now I'm just going to superimpose this over, maybe. No, superimpose to the side. Okay, there we go. Superimpose to the side, and on the bottom, we will superimpose on the 
uh, over. Okay. Now let me make sure my normals are the right way. It looks like they are. Okay, good. Now I can go ahead and um, actually I want the uh, first fingers to be kind of opposing on each other. Wait a minute. Yeah. Okay, so this goes over here and that goes over there. And I want that to be straight up and down. Okay. So now I can match up and make this these two things the same length. Okay, I can delete these points because I don't need them anymore. Just kind of pull these out. And then I will sew this stuff together. And I'm just going to let the thumb um, clip through right now because I can just make a hole for it. It's easier than trying to like try and fit it into a hole later. Just let it clip through and then go ahead in here and take your internal rectangle internal line tool and make a rectangle about right there and then cut that and that makes a hole and your thumb goes through real nice and i'm not going to worry about making that a nice hole yet because we're not quite through with the fingers we're almost done but not quite okay so now what we can do let me make sure oh what we do actually need to do in here is sew in the uh, So in these little pieces, these tiny little sewings, and this is tricky, you gotta get in real close. Use a 3D window to try and sew these up. Do your best. Because that's a really tiny, tricky bit of sewing here. Ah. Oh, and you know what I think happened is because I, yeah, this is no longer so when you start merging things and putting new pieces of fabric on, a lot of times it'll change the particle distance to whatever you merge it to. So just make sure your particle distance is still a five. I'll just make things easier. All right. So sew in these tiny little pieces right here. And then Not the easiest sewing to do, but got to get all that sewn up. Okay, so those are now sewn in. Um, actually, I'm going to pull these back a little bit to give it a little bit of curvature too. So that's not going to change much right now, but once you, in your final render stuff, you're going to turn your particle distance down to like two, so it'll matter then. Um, okay. Oh yes, we need to merge the fingers. Now we need to merge all of this into one piece. So all you gotta do is just click on that, merge, 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 merge. Okay, so there we have it, two pretty good looking glove right there. Okay, now it's time for the thumb. Now the thumb is another place that's really, um, can get confusing pretty quick. Especially if you do this uh, kind of thumb that I'm about to show you. Um, and like I said, the reason I do it is just for fit purposes, I think it's a little, it gives a little more movement right in the thumb and um, I prefer it. But it's very confusing when you look at it. When you first look at it, you're like, how does that thumb even work? And um, even I'm not like 100% on this, but we're gonna give it a go. So let's look at that uh, thumb we've got to do again. So not this one, it's this one right here. It's this crazy shape. So what happens is this piece up here folds up into into your webbing right here and it creates a little bit of a, of a gusset to give some extra fabric and movement right in here. Uh, it's very hard to visualize in 2D but I'm going to try and show you. Oh and then on the thumb you actually have you have to have, make that cut right there so 
the first thing we got to do is figure out how to uh, scale it in properly. And that, that can be really hard just to make everything fit. So let's try that. So first, let's just get the basic shape in. Okay. So you can kind of see what's happening already right here when we just do this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an internal line right here. And actually, I want to pull this out a bit more. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that's going to be cut up to there. Maybe too much. Back a bit. So now that you have that shape generally about right, uh, I'm going to fiddle more with it, aren't I? Okay. I'm not going to fiddle anymore. Okay. You can right click on this and cut. And that's just going to make a really thin slice down the middle like that. And then when you simulate, you can kind of see what's happening a little bit more here. So this is going to come up and it's going to be like a diamond shape right in here. Okay. So now what we need to do is fit the thumb on. And to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the basic shape of a thumb, which is pretty pretty standard on most sewing patterns. It looks like this. Uh, let's go over to the next one. Yeah, you can see this thumb looks like this. So all we want to do right now is create this bell shape on on the bottom of the uh, of the thumb. All these some gloves are just insane. These gloves. Ugh. Okay. So I want to create this kind of bell shape first. That's all we're going to worry about. And I'm going to add a point in right there, just to split it into two lines. And I want this line here to be the length of these three lines, which is 101.8. So this one is 86. So let's make this longer out to about, let's optimize all these curve points. So it was at 110, so slightly shorter, 104, a little bit bigger, that's fine. Okay, so now what I can do is I can take this, I can sew on there, sew it on. I'm just going to sew it all the way to the top. Even though it's a little bit off, I'm going to sew it all the way along there. And I'm going to bring it up and superimpose over. No. Superimpose side. No. Let it figure itself out. Okay, there we go. And now what I need to do is um, actually create this little split in the, uh, let me show you the pattern here. I need to create this little split right here. So that's not too hard. You just wear this pattern, where this sewing ends at this point, create a, an internal line about the same length of, um, of this, which is 25.7. So let's make that about 26. That's 29, about 26, 27, close. Okay. And then you right click on this and you cut it. All right. Now we just grab this sewing line here and we sew it to this. And I think I think that might have been reversed. Let's check in my 3D window here. Yeah, I need to reverse this sewing. So let's just reverse that. Okay, now it's going the right way. All right, now as you can see, this sewing attaches onto here. So we'll just sew those two pieces together like that. And there you go. You can see kind of what's happening. It creates this little extra bit of 
webbing within the glove to give your thumb more movement and the glove will it'll just simulate better when you're when you're moving your hand around okay now we need to just uh, do the other side here so again same process find your lengths and actually this is going to come all the way along so you see this is all one piece so um, we need to go here, which is 93.8. So let's pull this to be longer. It's fine. Okay. Now this end piece here. Check that out. It's a uh, 28.6. Oh, oops. I have to reverse that sewing. Okay, now this is probably too much there. Uh, and I need to turn my particle distance down to five. Okay. Now, a lot of times you're going to get some weird stuff going on in here, and that's surprisingly easy to fix because you just need to adjust your thumb hole. Sometimes it needs to go forward. And that's going to pull things back and that's going to fix your fit in here so just remember if you need to, if you've got a little bit too much going on in here all you have to do is just move your thumb hole around and get it in the right place to get the fit the absolute best just like that okay um okay now we just need to pull out the actual thumb here so add a couple more points and we'll pull the thumb out like so Sew the thumb up. Okay. That's good. Now we'll uniform split this. And again, we're just working off of uh, this kind of sewing pattern, which is, doo -doo -doo -doo, you know, because it folds over on itself. So. Just this as best we can. I think I'll actually pull these down. Oh no. Oh. Okay. Let me check my length. So this thumb is too long. So we'll just pull it back. Still too long. See if we can get a better curve right in here so that's not so. All right, that looks a little bit better. Okay, let's 
So that's created that nice little gusset. And that's pretty much a glove. Um, these gloves are pretty difficult to make in Marvelous Designer. Uh, this is, I hope, a good way to do it. Um, and then, of course, after this, you can add in all your other fun details, like uh, if you want some stuff on top. Let's go ahead and do that. But from here, everything else is just going to be your embellishments and your stitchings and your different ways of doing things. And go ahead and look at a lot of different gloves. On some gloves, the uh, these fourchettes go right to the tip of the finger and they connect in. And um, basically, you're going to be doing a lot of variations on this type of glove. Unless you do one of these other uh, crazier gloves types. But even them, they're essentially the same thing. It's just these two middle fingers, they fold over uh, entirely on each other like two big thumbs in the middle. And a lot of gardening gloves are like that. But uh, those, I don't know. Anyway, you can do things like inset this by five. Um, Those curve lines. Then add in your fold angle just down. Yeah. And then you can even turn down your particle distance to three to make them look really good. Make sure you're uh, okay. Collision thickness and your rendering thickness are both at one. That'll give you a better leather type look over here. Let me go the other way. Yeah. You can turn on your fold angle like that. And actually see. And then if you wanted tighter gloves, just really scale them down and that'll give you a more tight fitted glove like this. Uh, oh, and then of course you can change your uh, your fabric up to uh, like a lambskin, leather lambskin here. And that's gonna give you a more leather looking material. Um, of course, add in, oh, that finger's still not fitting really well. It's actually, Bring this in a little bit. See if we can get this to fit a little bit better. Okay, there we go. That's fitting a little bit better there. And you can do things like add, um, add in all your uh, little details if you're doing some kind of like military glove. Do something like this. You know, just add on all your uh, your fun details that you want to do. However you want to do those. And um, and then, the, of course, the real test is how it actually uh, animates when you're... Because, you know, the glove doesn't look too much like a glove right there. But once you start uh, animating the hand, it'll start to be like, oh, yeah, that looks more like a glove. 
place and you've got that. So now you're getting the right wrinkles and you can add in the little curve points and whatnot. Add in your, your top stitching, spread some top stitching. Because that's going to. Uh... The stitching in gloves really makes a big difference, and they really start to come alive once you start putting the, uh, the stitching in. And you can go in and just, you know, do all kinds of fun stuff to your glove. You can put in holes to make them look like driving gloves. You know, if you really tighten things up, you could cut them. If Because even still, the, the bottom of your glove is going to be a little bit baggy like that. You can add in, um, you can put in like a cut right here and kind of dart it to bring things in. You know, but this is a good starting point for a glove. Um, and And it will animate properly if you do it this way. So that's the big thing is, is it'll look good in any way you, you put your hand. It'll, it'll look like a glove. So um, I hope you learned something. You're probably going to have to work with these gloves a lot because gloves are definitely one of the uh, harder pieces of clothing to create in Marvelous Designer. Uh, all right. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. Until next time, bye.